It's been six months since our chickens moved into our coop. We absolutely love our design, so we're gonna share it with you today so that hopefully you can take away some of the things that we've done and use them in your coop. We are Alex and Elena, a couple in our mid-20s working towards financial independence and self-sustainability. Follow our journey as we grow, build, fix, and learn the skills we need to get us there. So let's first talk about the overall size of the coop. The coop needs to be big enough so that each chicken has three to four square feet. So for us, our coop is a four by eight coop, so we could fit up to 11 chickens in this space. We only have five currently, and we did that intentionally so that we would have room to grow our flock. There's two important factors to consider when you are designing your coop. You need to consider the space that the chicken needs, and then you also need to consider the ergonomics for yourself. You're gonna be spending a lot of time cleaning your coop, and so you wanna make sure that it's designed well so that you don't cause yourself any pain. For us, that meant that we wanted to make our coop so that one whole side of the coop opened up. This makes it easy for us to reach in and clean without hurting our back. Another thing that we did to help us with the cleaning is that we put linoleum down on the bottom of the coop. And we did this so that it would make it a lot easier when we were cleaning. When you have your chicken coop, you're gonna have pine shavings down so that when the chickens poop on it, it absorbs the moisture. But that doesn't mean that they're not gonna scratch around and move the pine shavings. And sometimes that poop gets onto the base of the coop floor. So by having this linoleum, it makes it a lot easier for us to clean it. We also went ahead and bent up the, the linoleum on the back side and we stapled it to the back of the coop. This keeps the pine shavings from getting into those little tiny crevices back there and us not being able to get it out. Another thing is that pests such as lice and mites like to hide in tiny spaces. So by bending that linoleum on the back side, we're gonna prevent them from getting into the tiny crevice. The last thing with regards to ergonomics of our coop is that we put it at a height so that we could easily fit a wheelbarrow beneath it. This makes it really easy to clean the coop because we're able to just scoop the shavings into the wheelbarrow rather than having to scoop them into some type of dustpan and then putting them into a bin of some sort. A lot of people will transform old sheds into coops. This is a great idea in theory, but you have to keep in mind that you're gonna have to then scoop all those pine shavings off from the ground and get them into a container to remove them from the coop. We like the idea of it being at a level where we can easily clean it. Make sure to check out Alex's video on how he built this coop. It's actually made out of pallets, so it's made out of about 90% recycled materials, which is awesome. We are able to save hundreds of dollars on the build, and we are able to reuse something that was going to be trash. Your chickens are gonna need somewhere to roost at night. So the ideal height for your roost is anywhere between one and a half to three feet high. You can see behind me that we have two different heights for our roost. So we built this so that we would have a lot of space for if we grew our flock and this allows them to jump up on this shorter one and then jump up on the high one. We've noticed that they really do like to be on the higher one, um, and typically, especially when you have a small flock, they will all be on one roost in the middle of the night. They do this to help protect each other, and then also it keeps each other, they keep each other warm. So you can see we have a little friend up here, and they like to jump up on there. So as far as the roost itself, some people will use tree branches, but what we found is that using a two by four worked best for us. You want something where the chicken can put their claws around the edge of the board and grasp onto it. They will kind of hunker down whenever they go to sleep at night and cover their feet with their feathers. Another really important aspect of your coop is that you have proper ventilation. Having proper ventilation in your coop is important because you're gonna remove any moisture that's sitting in the coop, which can cause respiratory illness as well as just other disease in general. The ideal amount of ventilation you have for your coop is you have one square foot of ventilation per chicken. So we have five chickens, so that would be five square feet. But keep in mind, we built this so that we could put more chickens in the coop, so we had to consider that. What we did is we went ahead and put three windows on the top of our coop, 
and we made it so that you can open and close them. So you can open it here. Alex put a piece of wood here where you can just turn it and it will hold the window up. And then you can put it down and lock it as well. Now, the reason that we did this is so that we can prevent drafts in the winters, especially near the roosting area. You don't want there to be drafts where the chickens are sleeping at night because that can cause them to get frostbite. You girls are being a little too loud. That being said, ventilation in the winter is just as important, if not more important, than in the summer or springtime. We achieve this by putting ventilation across the whole entire top of the coop. This is a way that a lot of people choose to do their ventilation. They try to make it higher than the roost so that it doesn't hit the chicken. For us, we have majority of the ventilation where it's high enough, um, but we do have the option to close these windows. Your chickens are going to need a way to get in and out of the coop on their own. So you're going to have to add a door of some sort. What we did initially is we had this door and then we took the string from the door and put it on a pulley and put it outside of the door itself. This allowed us to close the door without actually going into the coop. Uh, we since then have upgraded to an automatic chicken coop door. This was made by Alex's friend from college. So we lucked out that we got a deal on it. Alex made a video on it so if you haven't seen it go check that out but um an automatic chicken coop door is a great investment i know it's relatively expensive but it allows you to sleep peacefully at night not waking up in the middle of the night saying oh my gosh did you shut the door did you shut the coop door but um this is a great option if you don't want to do an automatic door is to have some type of string and put it on a pulley so that it's outside of the coop you're also going to need some type of ramp for your chickens to get out of your coop. We just did a simple piece of plywood with some rungs on it. This is really easy and it allows the chicken to grip onto something as they walk down it. We find that our chickens actually like to just fly out majority of the time, but it is good to have this option because some of them do use it. As far as nesting boxes go, you need one nesting box per four to five hens. And the recommended size for your nesting box is a 12 by 12 box. So we made it so that our nesting boxes are accessible from the outside of the chicken run. We did this so that we wouldn't have to walk inside, get our shoes all dirty to get the eggs. We have just an old recycled latch here. We're able to lift it up. Alex put a latch up here so that we can latch it once we get it open. And then we're able to easily come in here and grab our eggs. We set up our feeder so that it is a bulk feeding system. We use some drainage pipe and some fittings to make it work for the chickens. It seems to hold a lot of feed and we can keep a couple weeks of feed in here for our five chickens. Our water system is automatic. We have a PVC pipe with some poultry nipples in it and then it is gravity fed. This is our overall run area. We have a swing for our chickens. We also have this perch that's up pretty high. They love to be on that. And then lastly, we have a dust bath. Right now it's pretty empty and we need to refill it with some sand, but they absolutely love it. One thing that's really awesome about our pallet coop is that within the doors, we essentially have built-in shelves. We actually keep the chicken's mealworm treats in here. So anytime we open the coop to the door, they get really excited because they've learned that the treats are hidden inside. The chicken run needs to be big enough so that each chicken has about eight to 10 square feet. Our run is a 15 foot by 15 foot run. So it's a lot bigger than what we need for five chickens, but we figured we have the space and we'd rather give them the extra space so that we have happy chickens. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found some design aspects that you can use in your own coop design. Make sure to click the thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to our channel for similar videos, and also find us on Instagram and Facebook where we have daily updates. See you next time. Girls, you're being a little too loud. Come here. Why don't you go explore?